Hi everyone. Today I'm going to share with you a question from the 1981 Australian Mathematics Competition. And only about 5% of the younger students got this one right, so the kids around 13 years old. But the older students didn't do much better, only 7% of them got it right, these kids around 17 years old. So let's take a look. In a talent quest, there are three performers called A, B and C, and there's three judges that have to rank the performers from first, second, third. And the question is, how many ways can just two of the judges agree on the ranking while the remaining judge disagrees? So you might like to pause the video now and give that question a go. Now you might start by trying to think of all the ways that a judge could rank the three performers. So for example, they could put, they could say that B is, is the best and then maybe A and then C, or they could say C was the best and then a was second and B was third. Now, what you don't want to do is just start like randomly writing them all out like I have done there, because once you get to the end, you won't know if you've missed any. So what you want to do instead is use a technique called systematic counting, which is where you just want to list them all in a certain order. So a sensible order to use for this would be alphabetic order. So we want to start with A, B, C would be the first one alphabetically. And then it would be A, C, B would be the next one. Now there's no other way that we can have A first. And like there's no other way to arrange these two letters. So we know that we've got all of the, the possibilities where A is first. So now we can move on to B. And so the first one alphabetically with B at the start would be B, A, C. And then you've got B, C, A. So that's all the ones with B's. There's no other one with B at the start. And then we can do C at the start. So we've got C, A, B, and C, B, A. And then that's it. That's all of them. There's six. We know that that's all of them because we wrote them out in order. We know that there, there wasn't any that we missed along the way. So there is actually a faster way that you can do this. You don't have to list them all out. What you can do is use the, the same sort of principle um, that you'd use to do a question like if you have um, five shirts and four different pairs of trousers, how many different outfits can you have? So for that you would do, you've got your five shirts and then for, for each shirt you've got four choices for the, the trousers to do with it. So you'd go five by four and that tells you you've got 20 different outfits. So when you've got like five choices for one thing and then four choices for another thing, you multiply them together to work out the total number of possibilities. So in this case, you could say, well, there's three choices for which performer came first, and then you've got two choices for who came second after you've chosen the first one, because there's only like two performers left to choose from. And then after you've chosen those two, you've only got one choice for who comes third. So that gives you the six possibilities that we got by listing that out. And this is often, like this is a really common thing to happen in mathematics. So there's actually a special notation for this where you've got like the numbers going down by one and they're all multiplied. We call that three factorial. So that just means three times two times one. Okay, so that's the number of ways that one judge can rank the three performers. So let's think about how we're gonna work out how we're going to factor in that like two of the judges agree and the third one disagrees. So you might like to pause the video now and have a think about that. Let's say, for example, that judge one and two pick the ranking BAC. Now, judge three, since judge three has to disagree with the other ones, he can't have BAC as his ranking. He has to have one of these five. So he's got five choices for what ranking he does. So these two judges have six choices and then the remaining judge has five choices. So we can multiply those together to work out the total number of possibilities. But here's what I think probably most people missed is that it doesn't have to be judge one and two picking the same thing and judge three picking something else. It could be judge one and three picking the same thing and judge two disagrees or judge two and three picking the same thing and judge one disagrees. So we need to factor that in. So there's actually three choices for which judge disagrees with the other two. 
So we have to multiply this by 3, and that gives us the answer of 90. So that's the correct answer to this question. All right, let me know in the comments if you're still confused about this question, and give this video a thumbs up if you want me to make more like this. If you haven't seen my previous videos, then click here for the um, questions for the younger students, the junior division, or here for the older students.